get to root cause faster by correlating artifacts across endpoints and team members using Tanium's new investigate module. Welcome back to Tanium Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone. Have you ever been collecting seashells at the beach and you see, oh, this looks interesting. I look at the color on this one you put in your pocket. Oh, this is a different shape. You put that in your pocket. And before you know it, I've done this. You're thinking, I should have brought a bucket. It's like, okay, I'm going to the beach. Yes, I need a bucket to collect all these seashells. But man, my pockets are too full, right? I should have brought a bucket. Well, We've got a bucket for you today because when you're using Tanium to investigate things, uh, obviously you're going to find some interesting details in the Tanium console and you need a bucket to put those in so you can share those interesting things that you found with your team members and help collaborate uh, getting to root cause, right? So that's what we're going to look at today is this new capability. And there's even a couple new tricks I think you're going to like. So to give us this tour today, here is Josh Bryant. Josh, welcome to the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so like you said, my name is Josh Bryant, and I'm a director of technical product management here at Tanium. And I am responsible for this brand new investigate module that we're going to talk about here today. I also own our file integrity monitor solution uh, reveal, and I was a co-inventor of our impact product. So I've been around uh, quite a few different products here, um, but today I'm really excited to tell you a little bit about Investigate. We're going to talk about uh, helping people collect interesting things today. So tell us what is Tanium Investigate? Yeah, that was a great analogy that you started off there collecting the seashells. I, I like that. I might have to steal that one for, for future use. So the product is designed around helping you reduce your mean time to resolution, helping you quickly identify uh, what is causing an issue or a problem on an endpoint, and then also giving you some collaboration tools so that you know we have a lot of customers that uh, have told us, I have one set of people that are one person that starts off the investigation from an incident, right? Something comes in from the help desk, say a user reported a problem on the endpoint. And that might start with, you know, a level one technician and they're digging in, finding some problems. And, you know, most often uh, it ends up, they're throwing something over the fence at the next person at the end of their shift, or they need to escalate to level two, level three or whatever. And, uh, you know, you're sending some emails or something saying, hey, here's a little bit of what I found and, and stuff gets lost. So one part of this product is collaboration tools that allow the next person to pick off, pick up exactly where the previous person left off. So you'll have a trail of all the artifacts or evidence found that support your theories as to what is happening on this endpoint and the next person can take it over the, the finish line again, like at a shift change or an escalation or something like that, uh, making it a lot easier for that handoff to happen and, and take a lot of the guesswork off of it because you see exactly what the previous person found interesting and know that, okay, this is a path I need to continue or um, maybe where I need to go next based on that data that is is saved and preserved for you. And, you know, I've just been thinking about this from a, like the team capabilities standpoint for a while. It's like, we've got the, the core architecture that's unique to Tanium that gets us those real-time answers. Then we got the modules that go on top of that. And now we've got this new meta layer with reporting, for example, that cuts across all the modules and it kind of brings it together. So I see this as just another one of those capabilities where we're tying all the things together in Tanium to really give you that big view of everything. So, so what does this uh, look like? What exactly did we build? Uh, one of the reasons behind building this is we found that uh, 80% of all outages are due to some human introduced change that could be intentional or unintentional. A lot of things happen in customer environments and folks spend a lot of time trying to figure out the, the root cause or find out what the resolution is to the problem. And we're trying to build something that will help significantly reduce that mean time to resolution there. And 
part of the driving factor behind that is these incidents have enormous costs associated on them. Uh, the longer it takes you to find out what caused it and get to resolution, the more that cost adds up. You see a really interesting stat here. Outages can cost $9,000 a minute or more than 500000 an hour in large organizations. We want to try and help reduce that as much as possible for our customers. So again, the whole idea here is to drive down that mean time to resolution. Uh, we want to short circuit that investigation phase and really reduce the amount of time it takes to find out what's going on here. So with this product, we're trying to give you more holistic visibility in investigative insights on your endpoints. Um, and again, that collaboration side of it that we're talking about a minute ago, we give you an uh, incident tracking collaboration workspace that we'll show off in the demo here in a moment. And then because of the power of the Tanium platform, give you that ability to not only identify what the problem is, but use our platform to resolve incidents in a matter of seconds at scale. So, you know, we can start out focused on, I found a problem on this endpoint. Where else is this happening in my environment? What can I, can I take a quick action to resolve it across the board or maybe be proactive on it, you know, before it starts becoming a problem on additional endpoints? Because odds are in a lot of cases, what starts somewhere can often spread throughout an environment and we want to help you get ahead of that. Yeah, I can just see this scenario. We've all seen it in IT, right? Like say it's a Windows update or something. And, oh, wait, there's a registry key that has to get set across all these boxes on the certain OS flavor or whatever. So those are the types of things that we can identify root cause and then find it, fix it fast. Yeah. Now, I want to actually jump into the, the demo here. One of the big features that we have in our initial release is integration with ServiceNow. Uh, if you're not aware, we've got a nice partnership going on with the folks over at ServiceNow. Uh, there's a lot of different integrations throughout the Tanium platform and on the ServiceNow side as well. Uh, we wanted to expand those capabilities and our partnership with them with the introduction of the Investigate module. And as you know, most incidents start out with an end user reporting something to the help desk. And if ServiceNow is your ticketing system of choice, as it is for a lot of our customers, this integration is going to be really beneficial to you here. So I don't have a, a live ServiceNow environment to show, but we do have a nice little screenshot here to kick us off. Uh, as you can see here, we've got a user that has complained that their laptop is running really, really slow. You've probably run into it yourself. You run into it on both sides of the fence you, as an end user, as an IT professional, pretty common scenario. So what we can do from here is, you know, it starts off with the report from the user in ServiceNow, and we have the ability to go from ServiceNow into Tanium, into the new Investigate product, and show you on a timeline exactly uh, when that incident was reported so you can see what are the things that were happening on this endpoint that led up to the user reporting the incident? Uh, so I'm I'm a ticket uh, operator in service now, and I see, oh, wait, okay, here's the time they reported it. So now I can go back in time on the endpoint and see what was happening on the box. That sounds like our performance module in a little bit of a way. Uh, we have data that is provided by our performance module as, as part of this. In fact, the more modules or more Tanium products that you own, the uh, more benefit you get from Investigate because you get additional visibility that is provided by the different modules like performance. Now, some of the capabilities that you see in performance um, are used by Investigate, whether you own it or not. Uh, and we'll show you what that looks like here. So we started from our, our ServiceNow ticket. Um, if I was actually following that integration, it would drop you directly into the endpoint in Tanium. Uh, like I said, I don't have that shown up here. So I'm going to come at it from a different view. This is the way that customers that don't own ServiceNow would enter. So they have you know, some other ticketing system of choice, or maybe they don't have one at all. 
Uh, but they have a report from the user. Same scenario. I, user is complaining. Their laptop is running slow. They don't know why. Need IT to investigate it. So I come into the Tanium console and I switch to search for endpoints here. And I'm going to come into this endpoint. Uh, I'm going to pick this one here. Say this is our end user's endpoint. And we're going to come into the endpoint details. In here, uh, once you have the investigate module in your environment, you'll see this new tab. It's only available when you're licensed for investigate, um, aptly called investigate. And from here, I'm going to establish a direct connection to the endpoint. And we're going to start to see um, some details, some of it provided by performance uh, on here right away. So here we can see that yep, this matches with the user's complaint. I see 100% CPU usage uh, in our default look back of four hours. Now, in the scenario that we started with, where ServiceNow is our entry point, where we started there and then pivoted into Tanium, uh, what I would see is a mark on this time series graph that shows when this the incident was created in ServiceNow. And that helps me look back, okay, what happened leading up to that incident? So for here, um, we can see this has been going on for at least the last four hours, probably longer. Let me take a look at, let's go back the last seven days. Now we have the capability to look up to 14 days of, of history on the endpoint here. I'm gonna keep it simple at seven. Um, we see for this time frame that high CPU usage has been going on for a long time. Now with the performance module, if you own that, will be able to overlay performance events. So again, the more Tanium products I own, the more data that's available to me inside of Investigate here. So once I select that I want to see performance events overlaid on here, there's been quite a lot going on over the last seven days. It, it got kind of busy here, but I can see that um, not only do we have some CPU utilization alerts on here coming from performance, we also have some uh, memory usage coming on here as well. And when I scroll down, uh, here's the details behind the different events that are getting populated in here. And we can scroll and see back to the beginning of our seven day period. You know, this has been going on for quite a long time. Uh, can look at some details on it and we see the top processes, um, same type of data that we saw on the graph above here that uh, existed when this performance event was triggered was our antivirus.exe, uh, security software.exe, and then a couple of Atenium processes. Now, this is a pretty common scenario that a lot of our customers run into, uh, either the AV or security software, EDR tool, whatever, their exclusions are missing or not applied properly. And then they start to interfere with the Tanium process and can start causing uh, high CPU load on the endpoint, which appears to be what's happening here. Now, this, I very quickly went from the user's complaint to seeing that, okay, uh, we most likely have an AV exclusion issue here. I could explore and see if there's any other uh, details that support my theory by selecting the different event categories here. Um, we see there's one driver event, so that could indicate a driver was recently installed. Uh, there's a lot of different event types here. Now where I have uh, it grayed out in the case of um, this, where there's 3.9 thousand events, uh, to maintain usability and performance of the product, we limit uh, the number of events you can show in one period of time. If I want to see those, if those are going to be of interest to my investigation, I simply just need to adjust my scope. And All right, so I, I got I to gotta ask you right there, those Windows event IDs, right? Obviously... Um, there's there's websites where you can reference those, but how did we pick which Windows event IDs are relative there? That's a great question, and we're about to introduce some fantastic flexibility in that. Uh, the answer to the ones that you're seeing today, those are login-related events that we picked to support some security use cases. So one important thing that I forgot to mention earlier with the product here, it is designed 
for both operational, so the use case that we're looking at right now in this demo, and security use cases. So we have integration that is uh, being developed right now or actually strengthened with our threat response module um, and some other data points that we're providing that help with security use cases. And then there's integrations with like our patch and deploy module that helps strengthen the ops use cases. Now, the ones that we have here today, again, those are login related. Um, there's a couple of system related ones like showing when a reboot occurred, et cetera. What we have coming in the very near future that's very exciting is allowing you, the user, to choose which Windows events are important to you. We're going to have a full-fledged Windows event browser. So you can browse the Windows event log uh, remotely through the product here, through the endpoint details, and then you'll be able to set up subscriptions for events that you care about. So you'll be able to select the event ID or apply other um, filters or queries to choose which events are of interest to you. And then they'll be available for selection in the drop down here, and they'll get overlaid on the graph here as well. And then you'll be able to add those to an investigation, which is the, the next step that I'm going to show here. Man, that's exciting. I, I'm just having flashbacks of dating myself of, you know, RPC communication between the event log viewer and having to be on a LAN where you could have access, you know, line of sight on the network to another device. But now we're giving people, will be giving soon the ability to look at Windows event logs, even from somebody working from home. I mean, that's just amazing. Um, but I know you've got some some new tricks coming here, but I, I don't want to get us ahead of the script. I think you're going to show us how we can collect these things into our bucket of seashells, so to speak. Yes, yes. That fantastic analogy you had earlier. Uh, our, our bucket of seashells is the actual investigate module itself. So I can choose you know, one or more uh, activities of interest from the list here. So again, these are showing some details on what was happening on the endpoint around this time. Uh, we also see that there was some low memory, uh, slightly set, different set of processes that were uh, contributing to the memory consumption on here. Um, so we're focused on this one on the CPU event, so I can select a couple of these and then just hit this add to investigation button. And from here, I've got the ability to choose an existing investigation. So if I'm coming back to this after having started it earlier, or I'm the person that it's been handed off to, and I'm adding some additional uh, data to an investigation, I'm going to choose one of the existing ones. But here, let's say that this is a brand new one, and uh, our user, Jane Doe, laptop, CPU complaint. Let's just name our investigation that. Can put in a description here. User complained. And then I can assign it to somebody. So I'm going to assign this to myself. And I can also choose a priority for this investigation. Um, let's say, you know, this is a, a low priority user. Um, we're going to give this one a low for right now. And then that creates our investigation and I can immediately pivot to it by clicking the link in the toast notification that popped up here. And this takes me into the investigation itself. Now we see the endpoint that we started out uh, along with the timeline of when the events that we've added to the investigation are here. And we see the exact same details that we saw in uh, the live view for, through our endpoint details benefit here is now once I've added them to an investigation, these are visible whether the endpoint is online or not versus the screen that we were showing previously. We had to have the endpoint online. We needed to be able to establish that direct connection. Uh, but now, even if the endpoint is offline, I can still look at the activities that were added to it. Uh, we have a comment feature, so I can add comments at two different levels. Uh, I can add it to the overall investigation, or I can add something specific to the activity here. And this helps for that handoff. So if I'm going to give this to you, and I want to add, hey, what are my thoughts on this? I can add a comment to here and say, 
This looks like please verify. So let's say maybe I don't have enough permissions in my role at the organization to look at the AV exclusions. I need to pass that off to you uh, on another team. Maybe, you know, you're a sysad that is responsible for the AV exclusions. Um, so what I can do now is come in here and edit the investigation and change the assignee uh, from myself to Mr. Ashley McGlone. And I could also change the priority if desired. So let's say that this ended up being a little bit high priority than I initially thought. Adjust it there. Now the changes have been made. Now for you, if you're coming in here to pick this up, you know, you might come into the homepage of the investigate module. We're giving you a lot of different tools uh, to measure what's happening with your investigations in the environment. We got some nice stats up at the top. Now, our demo environment uh, is a, a little skewed because we leave things open and we're not operating like an actual customer would in the demo environment. We can say uh, our average or current mean time to resolution is two days and nine hours. So that gives some nice statistics. You know, hey, we want to uh, work a little bit harder and driving those numbers down. And we can see what the total amount of time that folks have been spending on investigations is, our number of investigations uh, that are open, how many are closed. We get some indication of, of what uh, caused us to initially start the investigation. So in this environment, most of them have been kicked off by a performance or event, or that's what the user has added to the investigation first. And we've got a couple Windows events here. You can see what the spread of uh, the different activity types is over. I'm sorry, this is the um, count per activity type. Uh, how many days have been open? What our priorities are set? Uh, look at some details by assignee. So we've got quite a few that are unassigned here and in our status open and closed. Then down here at the bottom, we've got our list of all of our, we're defaulting to show you just open investigations, but all the investigations that are currently open you can go into any one of these and see more details on it. If I wanted to filter it, so let's say I'm, I'm you now, I want to filter it to just the ones that are assigned to you. This is my open, your open investigation. You've got the ability to come in here and see exactly what I was seeing before I handed it off to you. Man, this is slick. I, like I said earlier, just I see this as a real maturity point for the Tanium as, a, as an entire suite or platform. Now we can pull these things together across modules. Like you said, we're primarily looking at performance here, but then there's going to be other modules getting plugged into this so they can be seashells in the bucket, so to speak. All right. Um, yeah. and I, all yeah. those modules that we have that are already doing that uh, is Enforce. We're getting uh, any policy changes that are made through Enforce are shown on there. Um, we using Software Manager, uh, which is traditionally part of like uh, Asset and Patch and Deploy, to show you uh, some software changes on there, specifically around uh, browser extensions. There's integration with Patch, so uh, if a Patch is installed through Tanium Patch. That'll show up as an event on the timeline. And you can see that, hey, right after we installed this patch, the system started to experience a problem. So if we change the scenario we we're looking at a little bit and say uh, the CPU utilization happened right after a patch was installed or a piece of software was deployed through deploy. Those things are already in place and we'll be continuing to expand those data points from other Tanium products uh, over the, the coming months. Yeah, if only those were real use cases, right? Right. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> Everybody's seen that stuff, so this is great. Um, there are a couple other things I want to switch back to and show real quick. Um, going back to the endpoint details. We'll load this in here. One of them being some remote management capabilities. So we've been focused on showing you more just the visibility side of it. Um, but, you know, Tanium has always been about visibility and control. So I'd be remiss if I didn't show you some of the control side. Uh, this other tab in the endpoint details, remote management, another new one that is only available if you own Investigate, allows you to see a couple of uh, interesting details and take some action here once this connects. So we have a live resource summary. This is what the 
uh, resource consumption looks like on the endpoint right now, real time. Uh, you can select what network adapter, if there's more than one that you want to view the network throughput on there. And you can look at disk, disk statistics on any disk that's in there. This environment only has just the one. Uh, and then down here, we have a live process monitor. And this allows you to remotely terminate any running process on the endpoint. So we know that um, antivirus.exe is causing our high CPU utilization. If I wanted to uh, alleviate that, so I have a chance to actually get on the machine and fix the exclusions, I could terminate the process and it would happen instantly. So I have to pause right here and ask, all right, Windows, Mac, and Linux, what's the platform support across the OSs? So most everything in there today is across all three. There are a couple of exceptions. Obviously, Windows event logs only exist on Windows endpoints. Uh, and then the uh, group policy stuff through Enforce is only Windows as well. But all of the performance data... Um, all of the data through Recorder, which comes through uh, Threat Response, those are all all supported platforms there. So this C shell looks like a Mac OS. This C shell looks like a Linux Ubuntu, right? This C shell looks like wow, this is great. I, I'm loving it. Another cool capability we have here, which our Threat Response customers might be familiar with, but there's a few enhancements that haven't quite made it to Threat Response yet but they're here and investigate is with our file browser. So here I can browse the file system on the endpoint live, uh, but then I also have the ability to tail any text file on the endpoint. I'm not sure where one is on this endpoint. Yeah, yeah here we go. We have the, uh, Here's a XML file. Now this file isn't being modified, but you see the tail button here and you can kind of get the idea. Uh, I could click on tail and see this change live if it was a log file that's getting updated live. Extremely useful on your Linux and Mac endpoints uh, where you know, you're gonna have your like var log message, for example, that is constantly updating. Uh, I can look at that in here and watch it grow or change going to have some on Windows as well, but I know I tend to use that functionality more on my non-Windows endpoints. This is a really nice toolkit for investigations. Yes, I could just SSH into it, provided, like we said earlier, I had line of sight to that endpoint. With this, it doesn't matter where the endpoint is. Uh, I don't know how many folks have... <laughs> users that are using Linux on the desktop at home, but uh, it's certainly a possibility. Uh, you know, as long as the endpoint has communication with the Tanium environment, I can get to it. Whereas if I was trying to SSH, there might be other network things in the way that prevent me from doing that, whether the user's at home or in a different segment that I can't cross into from the segment that I'm sitting in. This gives you a lot more flexibility and allows you to take some action on the endpoint uh, without having to inconvenience the, the end user. Other thing I didn't mention about the file browsing capability is I can delete files from there if necessary. And things are RBAC controlled, so I can prevent people that I don't want having those capabilities from doing it when they shouldn't do it. All right. So I'm looking at the clock. This is all exciting. I'm really enjoying it, but we got to wrap this up. So, so what are the few last things we've got to look at here? Uh, that's it for our current capabilities. Um, I'd love to mention if we got a, a minute or two left to uh, some of the upcoming capabilities. Yeah, sure. Tell us what's coming up next. Yeah. So we already mentioned earlier the upcoming Windows Event Log Viewer feature, which I'm really excited about. And that is coming very, very, very soon. Uh, next thing after that, we're going to have a registry browser. So again, that's obviously going to be Windows specific, but you'll be able to remotely view the registry on any of your Tanium managed endpoints. Uh, then we're also going to have service control. So you can uh, start, stop, disable, et cetera, change properties of a service. That's another Windows specific one. Uh, and then coming a little bit later, so probably sometime next year, 
is going to be a remote command line and that should be cross-platform. So through the web interface here, I'll be able to have an interactive command line on my Windows, Mac, Linux endpoints. So again, I have other options to take action to resolve the issue that I'm found in here on the user's endpoint without having to inconvenience the end user and being able to overcome some of those challenges of you know the users at home or on some network segment that I can't access. So and you combine that with the remote screen sharing ability that we with the remote screen sharing. I mean yeah. so so now you can do remote command line and registry browsing, event log browsing. Why I mean this just keeps getting better. The, the longer you're talking, the more I'm thinking I, I know customers who could use this today because they've they've what they've done is they've sing they've taken that single endpoint view and interact and they've really centered their help desk functions around that to get that real-time data. And now we're taking it into the real-time control. This uh, this is really good. And we're, again, we're expanding the list of events that are activities that are available in there. Uh, one of the ones that's coming in the pretty near future is further integrations with threat response. So think of, I've had an alert that happened on the endpoint. That could be the trigger uh, you know, malicious activity happening on there that caused further things in a security incident or maybe even had some operational impact on the endpoint. And those things will be in, in the timeline and you'll have the ability to add them into your investigation. So we're just going to continue improving this and giving you more and more useful, meaningful data that helps drive down that mean time to resolution. And so this was already released last month, folks. This is already available. Uh, and Josh, anything different between cloud or on-prem that people should expect or they just need to, how do they get it? I guess uh, they go to the console today, they're not going to see it. How do they actually get it? Yeah. So contact your sales rep. You have to buy a license for it. Uh, and for our cloud customers, it's automatic as soon as you're, you're licensed for it it'll show up in your console and you'll be able to start using it right away. For our on-prem customers, as soon as you're licensed for it, it's gonna show up on the solutions page as available for install. And once you install, there's no additional configuration for it. Uh, the modules there, the capabilities are added into the endpoint details and you're ready to go. Thank you. for it, it just keeps getting better. This is fun. Uh, wow. I, I'm just thinking of all the years of troubleshooting that I've done, how much easier it would have been with tools like this. So thanks for this tour today of the new investigate module, that bucket for all those interesting seashells you find walking on the beach, walking down the wires of your network, looking at machines, thinking, oh, wait a minute, we need to show this to somebody. Yep, put it in the bucket called investigate. And now you can collaborate across teams. You can collab across, collaborate between ops and security for investigations across machines. Fantastic. So uh, obviously there's more to this. We're just scratching the surface in this demo. If you'd like to learn more, check out the show notes below. All right. So uh, our favorite three websites around here, right? Docs.tanium.com, community.tanium.com, and kb.tanium.com. KB, remember, has those release notes. All that stuff's in the show notes below. So there you have it, folks. Uh, we can reduce that mean time to res resolution, find root cause faster with the Tanium Investigate module. So until next time, go Tanium.